Welcome dear audience, students and scholars. Here I am Dr. Ramjad Ali, dear scholars, uh, having the detailed discussion about the dynamic model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply and the role of the central bank in deciding the equilibrium of uh, uh, this uh, dynamic uh, model of aggregate demand and supply. Um, uh, here in this video, we are focusing uh, the Taylor rule for uh, the central bank okay introduction if you wanted to set interest rates uh, to achieve low stable inflation while avoiding large fluctuations in output and employment so one of the main question you ask uh, uh, here that uh, how would you uh, do it this is exactly the question that the governors of the Fed Reserve uh, must ask themselves every day. The short-term policy instrument uh, that the Fed uh, now sets uh, is the federal funds rate, the short-term interest rate at which banks uh, make loans to one another. Okay, whenever the uh, federal open market committee meets it chooses a target for the federal funds rate the feds uh, bond traders are then often uh, told to conduct uh, open market operations uh, to hit the desired target so here we have uh, uh, some guidelines for the central bank Okay, the hard part of the Fed's job is choosing the target for the uh, federal funds rate. Okay, there are two general guidelines are clear uh, here. The first, when inflation heats up, the federal funds rate should rise and increase in the interest rate will mean uh, a smaller money supply and eventually lower investment lower output higher unemployment and reduced inflation second when real economic activity slows as reflected in real gdp or unemployment the federal funds uh, rate should fall a decrease in interest rate will mean uh, a larger money supply and eventually higher investment higher output and lower unemployment okay these two guidelines are represented by the monetary policy equation in the dynamic aggregate demand and aggregate supply model okay moving towards the further guidelines for central bank and the fed needs to go beyond these general guidelines however and decide exactly how much to respond uh, to changes in inflation and real economic activity okay for this purpose uh, Sanford University economist John Taylor has proposed the following rule for the federal uh, funds rate that is nominal federal funds rate is equal to inflation plus 2 plus 0 0.5 into inflation minus 2 plus 0 0.5 real GDP gap so uh, here the GDP gap is the percentage by which real GDP deviates uh, from uh, an estimate uh, of its uh, natural level for consistency uh, with our uh, dynamic uh, uh, aggregate demand and aggregate supply model the GDP gap here is taken to be positive if GDP rises above its natural level uh, and uh, negative if it falls uh, below uh, that level so here we have the Taylor rule according to the Taylor rule the real uh, federal funds rate nominal rate minus inflation um, uh, responds uh, to inflation and the GDP gap according to this rule the real uh, federal uh, funds rates are equal to 2 percent uh, uh, when inflation is 2 percent and GDP is at uh, its natural level 
Okay, the first constant of 2% in this equation can be interpreted as an estimate of the natural rate of uh, interest that is rho and the second constant of 2% uh, subtracted from inflation can be interpreted as the Fed's inflation target uh, uh, by T static. Okay, for each percentage point that inflation rises above 2%, the real federal funds um, rate rises by 0.5% uh, for each percentage point uh, at uh, real GDP rises above its natural level. The real federal funds rate uh, rises by 0.5% if inflation falls below 2% or GDP moves below its natural level. The real federal funds rate falls accordingly. Okay, in addition uh, to being simple and reasonable, the Taylor rule for uh, monetary policy also resembles actual Fed behavior in recent years. So let's see a graphical presentation uh, for that purpose. Here we have the federal uh, funds rate actual and suggested. We have a historical uh, overview of uh, these actual and suggested federal funds rate here. So here red line present the actual uh, fund rates and uh, green line present the Tyler or Taylor uh, 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 federal fund rate suggested. Okay, this figure shows that the actual um, nominal federal funds rates and the target rates are determined by the Taylor with uh, green line here proposed uh, uh, by the Taylor rule. Notice how these two series are tend to move together. John Taylor's uh, monetary rule uh, may be uh, more than an uh, academic suggestion to some degree. It may be the rule that the Federal Reserve governors have been uh, subconsciously following. So these figures uh, uh, presents that the federal fund rate by the uh, Federal uh, Reserve and the target rate that is suggested by the Taylor rule for monetary policy would be recommended. Notice that uh, we have uh, uh, these two series are very close to with one and other. So this is all about uh, the Taylor rule. So see you with another video. Ciao.